Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to go through some tips and hints on how to speed up performance in your Windows PC. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so today we're going to look at a few uh, Windows tweaks and some hints and tips to try and get the most out of your system. Now, whether you're running the latest technology in solid state drives, or maybe you're still rocking an old hard disk drive with its mechanical platters, then hopefully in this video there should be some hints or tips which are going to be right up your street and will improve your Windows performance and hopefully your boot up times and possibly your general system stability. So join with me as we go through the system and see what tweaks we can apply to our system to make it run a little bit better. So let's go straight over to the PC. Okay, so one of the first tips I've got is to disable hibernation within Windows 10. This pretty much goes for any of the Windows versions which support hibernation. Hibernation is a good thing in some cases, but realistically in modern times where PC boot times are far, far faster than they were with hard disk drives, and these days it's easier just to turn off your PC and then restart it when it comes back on. Hibernation generally leaves the system in a very, very low power state, and again, with laptops and portable devices these days, you want to try and keep as much of that power as possible. So shutting down the device is far easier and better for the system. So to disable hibernation, which also takes up roughly about 75% of your memory of your system, which then gets transferred into a storage area on your hard drive, which is the hibernation file. This is just a complete waste of space on SSDs especially when if your RAM is like 16 gigs, 75% of that is somewhere in the region of about 12 gigs of data, which is then being copied to your SSD, which if it's only a 120 gig drive, that's the best part of 10% of your system space just for that hibernation file, just waiting for you to resume. So let's disable that altogether. Now the first thing to do is go to your Windows computer and type in CMD for command and then right click on the command prompt and choose to run it as administrator. You'll get the use your account control prompt, just click OK or yes, and then you get your DOS box come up or your command box. So what we want to type in here is power cfg or power config dot exe, then a space, then a minus, then an H, then a space, then off. Now basically this command is going to tell Windows that you no longer want to have hibernation on your system and we'll get rid of it. It will also get rid of the hyper file, the kind of the massive hibernation file which is created on your disk. So just hit enter and that's it. All you need to do now to get rid of that file or to flush the file out of the system is to do a reboot. So. That's tip number one. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is to cut down on some of those uh, hard drive LEDs thrashing around and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna cut out now the window search and the prefetch or superfetch. Now superfetch is a way of Windows kind of caching what's going on in the system and trying to speed up optimization for those applications loading. So if there's a specific set of applications you use on a regular basis, Windows will kind of make a note of this and try and cache some of those programs into the memory or into the hard drive so that they're ready to go a little bit quicker than some of the other applications. Now again, with modern hardware, this really isn't necessary anymore. Most SSDs and modern systems will open programs like Lightning anyway. So this is just another Windows resource hogging up things in the background. And also the Windows search. Now don't uh, let this be confusing. It's not anything to do with your internet searching or your browsing. Windows search is basically when you type into a search box, in a My Computer box or the Run box. It's just a way of Windows having everything indexed in your system so it can find it that little bit faster. Now, in truth, between having this indexed or not indexed, I've never really noticed any difference in performance as in looking up the files, but it actually does make a massive difference if you're using an older hard disk drive on your system as you don't have to have that 100% hard drive activity on boot up for a couple of minutes until things settle down. So let's go into the system and get rid of that now, or at least disable it. So what we want to do is 
in the uh, search bar or the bottom bar, type in services dot msc and you can either press enter or click on services desktop app and this is a list of all the services that are running on the machine and their current status and um, basically what we want to do is scroll down to find uh, super fetch now what we want to do is right click and choose properties now if the service is already running you can click on stop and wait until it's stopped now also once it's stopped where it says startup type at the moment it's set to automatic so we want to set this to disabled so that will prevent it starting in the future click apply and okay and we're done so now we can go down to find windows search so same deal for windows search at the moment it is probably going to be running so i don't think i've disabled it on this particular system so at the moment it's uh, automatic with a delayed start so we're going to click on stop so we wait for the service to stop and now we can change the startup type to disabled click apply hit ok and we're done so that's two pretty important parts of the windows indexing system and the prefetch system disabled so let's move on to the next thing okay so the next tip is a slightly more controversial one now this is to disable the Windows uh, recovery option or the system restore option. Now for a lot of people, system recovery can be really, really helpful. And if you get into a spot of bother of your PC, it's really nice and simple to go into the system restore and just roll back a couple of uh, days or a week or whatever it may be, or to when your PC was last working properly. Now for a lot of people, this does work out absolutely fine, but a lot of people don't like to use the system restore function it does get you out of a jam but it's not the ideal solution really you should be finding out what it is that has caused a problem with your system and rectify it rather than wait a few days for it to happen again so also the system restore files take up a, a massive amount of room or at least they can do depending on the size of your drive windows generally sets aside a portion of your hard drive to uh, keep recovery files now obviously if you've got a big two terabyte hard drive this isn't a problem. If you've got a smaller SSD or you're running a laptop, space is at a premium. So you want to try and reduce it if at all possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to completely uh, stop system recovery from actually working or taking up any space. Obviously do this at your own risk. If you like to use system recovery or you like the thought of having system recovery available, then this is great. Uh, well, maybe it's not great. I'll let you decide, but this is how to do it. So again, from the Windows uh, search bar, just type in recovery, and click on recovery. So we get the advanced recovery tools. Now, in here you have the option to create a recovery drive. So this would be useful, actually, if you don't want to uh, remove the functionality but you've got a secondary drive in your machine such as an older hard disk drive as a, a D drive or E drive or something like that then you can move it so that your recovery uh, area or your partition your recovery partition is in a separate place which is going to cut down on any wear and tear on your SSD um, you've also got an option to open system restore and the last one is configure system restore so we're going to go ahead and choose that and at the moment, as you can see, I've got my local disk C, the system disk and protection is currently set to on. So we could go into configure and in here, you've got the two kind of options. This is essentially the kill switch. So if you disable system protection, that will remove any existing system restore points and free up that hard drive space. And obviously it will stop creating new uh, restore points. But if you want to play it safe, then what you can do is you can use this slider at the bottom and you can configure what size of your drive you actually leave available for system restore points. So again, if you want to save a lot of space, then you can put it down to maybe, I don't know, 5%, 2%, something like that. Windows will actually need a certain percentage to actually create these files. So if you're not sure and you want to save as much space as possible, then um, the best way is to go nuclear and disable system protection. Before we do that though, I'm gonna click on delete, which will get rid of all the existing save files. 
So there is a big disclaimer there. You will not be able to undo unwanted system changes on this drive. Are you sure you want to continue? So definitely, definitely, before you continue, make sure that this is what you want to do. If you haven't taken a backup now, now is probably a good time to do it. But I'm going to continue anyway. And there we go. There's our system restore points deleted successfully. So we can close that now. Disable system protection. Click apply. And again, you're going to get the disclaimer. Are you sure you want to turn off system protection on this drive? Yes, I do. And that's it. We're done. Hit OK. Close all your windows down. At this point, it's probably a really good idea to restart the system just to make sure that everything's A-OK. -okay. And if you have caused anything to go wrong, then at least you know what you've done and you can go backwards. Well, maybe you can't now. So that's the third one of the kind of space saving and pretty much of the kind of the hard drive thrashing around type problems that we all get. So let's move on. So the next exercise in freeing up some hard drive space is pretty much the obvious one, Windows Disk Cleanup. So let's fire up Windows Disk Cleanup and see how much space we can potentially save. Now, if you've never run Windows Disk Cleanup before, it's actually a really good little utility. Just type in disk in the Windows search. And this is the disk cleanup for drive C. Now, if you've got multiple drives in your system, you can choose between the two. And also you can choose which files you want to delete and which ones you want to keep. So you've got a, a tick box on the left hand side. And if there's files that you're not sure about, then you can just leave that unticked, but everything else you can tick. Now I generally go down through and tick everything just to reclaim as much space as I possibly can. Now, if you want to reclaim even more space, if you click on clean up system files, this will then search the system for any unnecessary system files. And sometimes will actually give you a really, really good uh, amount of space freed up. So in this particular instance, we don't have anything else. Quite often in this section, what you would have is uh, previous Windows installations. So if you've got a windows.old folder, it will help to get rid of those. And those can be quite large, uh, anything from four to 20 gigs, depending on your configuration of your system. So deleting the uh, Windows old installations can be really useful. Again, similar to the Windows Restore section, if you delete a windows.old folder or the old installation, then you won't be able to roll back to that should you need to. But again, it's one of those gambles. Personally, for me, I prefer to have more space on my drive. And luckily, I'm in a position where pretty much most problems on the system, I can kind of fix myself. But if you're not sure, then obviously don't delete those files. So there's not a great deal here. I've kept this system relatively clean and it's only got 30 megabytes, but we'll go ahead and delete those files anyway. Now cleaning up the system, if for instance you're doing this cleanup and there are a lot of files or a large size or it's uh, previous Windows installations, this disk cleanup can take an awfully long time. So do set aside a little bit of time to, to make sure it can actually do its job. And it's really, really important that you don't turn off the PC while you're doing that just in case. So that is a good way of, uh, of getting some of your system space back. The Windows cleanup tool is good, but it doesn't do everything. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth or you want to remove a little bit more from your system, you can install CCleaner. Now CCleaner is a free application. There's also a paid version as well, but this runs quite happily in the background. It keeps a monitor on your temporary files and all those kinds of things and can actually free up a lot of space and can also trim and clean up some of your registry. So let's go ahead now and install CCleaner and we'll see if it can uh, improve on what Windows has already done for us. Right, so we've downloaded and installed CCleaner and if you want to see how to install CCleaner or where to get it from, I'll put links in the show notes below and also there's a video which will link up here so you can see how to install it. Now CCleaner normally resides in your taskbar and we'll just open CCleaner and the first thing you want to do is click on Analyze. Now, if you click on Analyze, it's a great tool because it will look and see what savings can be made without going ahead and actually making those savings for you. So this is kind of like a, a pre-check, pre almost like a pre-MOT for a car to see what is wrong before you actually go ahead and fix it. Now, in this particular instance, even though we've just run the Windows Cleanup tool, CCleaner thinks it can save us almost two gigabytes of space already. And this is literally straight away. So most of that seems to be from uh, memory dumps 
and there is the internet cache for Google Chrome, which is currently about half a gig. Uh, I have noticed the Microsoft Edge browser cache can get into some kind of crazy file sizes. So CCleaner, I definitely recommend to go ahead and sort of reclaim some of that space which is being taken up. Now, do bear in mind if you do run CCleaner on your Windows browser cache, your, sorry, your Chrome browser cache or your Edge browser cache, any saved information you have, such as passwords, user IDs, that sort of thing, they may be uh, erased as well. So just make sure that you've got all your passwords, everything you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and run CCleaner. Again, this will take a lot longer or a lot shorter, depending on how much you need to get rid of. But there, that's taken less than six seconds to clear up two gigabytes, which is pretty good in my book. Now you can also, if you wanted to, on the tab on the left hand side, choose to do the registry cleaner as well. Um, we're not going to go into that too much now because the system's running fine, so there doesn't appear to be any obvious problems in the registry. But if your system does start getting slow or a little bit glitchy, then it's definitely worth running the registry cleaner as part of your maintenance program. Okay, so one more thing, the uh, pretty obvious one is applications. So if you've got a new PC and you've uh, had a pre-build PC from the likes of Dell, that kind of thing, then there's a strong chance that you've got some uh, kind of bloatware on your system or extra programs that you don't necessarily need. Also as well, with Windows 10 being what it is, there is a tendency for Windows 10 to download apps which aren't really necessary. So easiest thing to do, go to the start bar, right click and choose apps and features. Now in the apps and features, this will show you all the programs that are installed on your PC. So you can have a scroll down through and see if the, any of them are actually ones that you no longer use anymore and that can be safely erased. Quite luckily, a lot of these apps, if they're apps that can't be erased or are needed by the operating system, you won't be able to uninstall them. So don't worry about doing too much damage here. Obviously, any programs you do uninstall, make sure that you've either got the software the disks or the uh, license codes to re-enable them should you need to. So having a quick look down through here, we've got pretty much a, a cleanish system. So we've got our Aurora software for the ASUS motherboard. It's got our CCleaner, CPU ID, which is a monitoring software, um, game capture software, which we know this is for our capture card, Google Chrome, Google Music, which we would love to get rid of, but unfortunately we can't, so that's grayed out. Uh, Logitech webcam software for our webcam, so we need to keep that. But pretty much, that's a relatively clean system. We've got Windows updates there for the Visual C++. Most of those are necessary. We've got MSI Afterburner, OneNote, Paint 3D, etc. A couple of games, but not a, not a great deal there. So though that looks relatively clean, but if there's anything in your apps and features section that you don't recognize. Um, put them into a Google search, see what they are, see if they're actually recommended for your system, see if they are kind of classed as bloatware or non-required programs. Again, if you're not sure if they're good, bad, or indifferent, feel free to stick the uh, program name in the comments section below, and either myself or any of the other commenters on this channel will uh, happily tell you or give you advice on what that program is and if it's necessary. So that is pretty much it from uh, doing a quick disk cleanup. If you've got any comments or suggestions or any other things that you'd like to do to your system to help speed it up or to improve performance, please let us know. Stick them in the comments section or drop me an email, mike at mikesunboxing.com. Uh, really look forward to hearing from you. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This has been a quick video on how to clean up your hard drive in your Windows 10 system. Thanks for watching.